Hi guys, this is Christina from Brush and Bristle Studio. I'm going to go over how to use the 20 ounce skinny mock-up today. Um, to get started, we're going to open this in Photoshop or you can use Photopea. The first part of this tutorial, I'm going to go over how to use it in Photoshop. Um, if you plan on using Photopea, stick around because I'm not going to go over everything again in Photopea because so much is the same. There's only like one or two things that we're going to do a little differently in Photopea, and I'll go over those things, but um, everything else you're going to need to watch in the Photoshop portion. <laughs> All right, so once you have this open, we're going to look for these red tabbed layers. These are the smart object layers. So if you will double click on this thumbnail right here, this is going to open up your smart object document. Um, so now you're going to want to go to File, Open, and navigate to the file that you want to mock up. Um, now you're going to want to copy and paste this into that Smart Object document. And to do that, you can hit Control A, or you can get this marquee tool right here and drag and drop to cover the document and you'll see the marching ants all around the canvas. That means it, that means that it's all selected. Um, once it's selected, you'll hit Control C, or you can go up here to edit and hit copy. Close this, and now that you're back in your smart object document, you're gonna wanna hit Control V, or go edit, paste. Now, if your design is not the right size, as this, um, you can hit Control T or go to Edit, Free Transform, and you'll see these little anchor points that get added around your document. Um, <coughs> now you can grab this and drag and drop it, and as you see, it's resizing proportionally, but let's say you've got one side that's not the right size, but the rest is. Um, you're obviously not going to want to use the proportion free transform. So you see this link right up here um, is highlighted. This is linking your width and your height. So you're going to want to check that and you see the highlights are moved now. So you can drag and drop this over here and it will only do it to that side. Now, another option is, let's say that is highlighted again. Instead of going up here and um, doing the highlight, you can hold shift down while you drag and drop and see it's still only doing that one side. I prefer doing shift, holding shift down because it just helps with the workflow. You don't have to go up and click things a bunch of times. Um, so that's my little hack with that. Um, once you're happy with how it's sized, you can go up here to the check mark, press that, or press enter, um, press control S to save, or you can go up here to file, and then hit save. If we go over, you see it has been added to all three tumblers for you. Um, let's see. Some little changes that you can do are messing with the highlights and shadows on the tumblers. Now these are set by which tumbler they're on. So the left, the middle, the right. Um, and that's going to be applicable to a couple other things throughout this. So keep that in mind. Um, to start, let's take a look at like our glossy overcoat. So if you click on that, you'll see a blending mode up here set at screen and the opacity is set at 55 fill is at 100 now I do not recommend messing with the blending modes on any of these because depending on the blending mode it can actually change the coloring of the design so we don't want that <laughs> um, but if you're wanting to change the intensity of it that we can definitely do through the opacity and the fill so let's say you want the glossy overcoat to be more intense. So we're going to take it up. And that made it 
very intense compared to these other ones. Say you want to make it less intense. You just click down there and it takes it down. Um, now it's the same thing with highlights and with the um, shading right there. Again, don't mess the blending mode, but you can mess with the opacity and fill. And you'll do that for each of these. Um, another way to add uh, highlights and shadows to this would be this extra highlights and shadows layer group right here. If you toggle that visibility on, you'll see it pops just a little bit. I have it. I have two filters set on here already. I've got a brightness contrast filter and a vibrance filter on here. And if you want to edit these, you can. Um, to do that, you just double click the icon. So we double click this one and the brightness contrast filter panel will open up. And once it's open, you've got more of these little dials. And if you just drag and drop them, you see it will impact the entire mock-up. <laughs> the background, the tumblers, everything. So be very careful when you're doing these changes because it can change even the coloring of the design, everything. Um, the same thing will go with Vibrance. You've got the same options there as well. Now, if we go take a look at Lid, Straws, and Shadows, again, you'll see they're split up by Tumblr. Um, but if you look at them, you've got a bent metal straw, then you've got a straight metal straw, and a plastic straw. Um, with this plastic straw and the metal straight straw, um, you've got a special shadow for that. So as you see, it'll help make these pop just a little bit more. But those are your options for straws right now. But I have everything set to be on the bent straws automatically. Um, bottom shadows, these are, again, separated by Tumblr orientation. Um, and you can still mess with these. Don't mess with the blending mode again, but you can mess with the opacity and the fill to make them a little bit darker. You can also move them up and down um, individually as well. Like I'll take this up darker so you can see it easier. Um, you take it down, you can take it over, whatever you want to do to help make it more your own. Let's see. And last thing to go over, I've got eight different backgrounds logged in to this for you. Um, that way you've got a nice little starter selection that'll go with a wide variety of designs that you're working on. Um, with your white shimmer, I've attached a hue saturation filter layer. Um, so if you double click on that panel, like, let me hide that again. If you double click on this little palette, it'll open up the hue saturation filter panel. And you'll see this colorize option right here. If this box is not checked, you're not gonna see the color. So if for some reason it doesn't get, it gets checked off or something, that's what it is. And you can very easily fix that by just checking that box. Now to change the color, you can drag and drop this in hue to take you to the color that you need. You can make it more saturated, less saturated. Um, you can make it lighter or darker. Whatever you need to really make your design pop. Um, I just try to give you guys as much flexibility as possible to make these mock-ups really your own for any design that you're working on. But that's all I've got for the Photoshop portion of this mock-up tutorial. Um, if you guys are using Photopea, stick around and I'll show you how to use it in Photopea in just a minute. If you guys have any questions or um, like to give any feedback on anything, please feel free to leave a comment below or message me in my Etsy shop. Um, but I'll see you guys in just a minute. Okay, everybody, I'm gonna go over how to use this mock-up in Photopea now. Now, to get to Photopea, you're gonna go to photopea.com in any web browser. You can use it on a PC or um, 
on an iPad, a phone, as long as there is a web browser, you can use Photopea. Um, it's free, you don't need to make an account, and it even syncs to like Dropbox, OneDrive, um, Google Drive, all that stuff. So it's pretty convenient to use. Now, once you get to photopea.com, you can go to open from computer. And let's see. Open up the mock up. And as I said earlier, pretty much everything about this is the same as in Photoshop. Um, out of all the art programs I've used, Photopea is the most comparable to Photoshop. So there's not too much that's different. It has a lot of the same tools and features. Um, so everything I went over before you can do. The only thing that's a little different is the method behind the smart object. So again, you're going to look for those red tabbed layers for the, the smart object layers, and you're going to double click on that thumbnail. It's going to open up the document. So now we're going to go to file and we would hit open in Photoshop, but we're going to hit open in place in here. Now navigate to the file that you want to mock up. And as you see, it's already copied, pasted and set the design to free transform. So it's the same as in Photoshop. You've got your um, proportions are linked. So if you don't want them linked, you can uncheck that or you can leave it checked and hold shift to help you resize. But once you're happy with the size of it, um, click that check mark and you can hit control S to save or go to file, save smart object. And that's going to update your smart object for you and voila as you see um it's really the same as photoshop there's just that little little difference with uploading that um but if you guys have any questions on how to use photoshop or photopea um the mock-up feedback on ways i can improve um please feel free to comment below or send me a message in my Etsy shop. But I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and enjoy the mock-up. Have a great day.